Hello and welcome to the Plone Newsroom. Uh, the Plone Newsroom is a podcast about what's new in the world of Plone. Uh, if you don't know that, Plone is a open source content management written in Python by a huge and great and loving community, and we're part of that. This is the first episode of this podcast. My name is Philip Bauer. I'm a Plone developer from Munich. I've do, been doing Python and Plone and web development for more than 15 years now. And I'm part of the company Stratzel DE. My co-host is... Hi, my name is Fred van Dijk. I'm also a long-time Plone developer, well, actually end-user Plone developer, consultant, trainer uh, from the Netherlands, Rotterdam. Welcome. Thank you, Philip, for inviting me for being your co-host. Yeah, I'm happy that you agreed to do this podcast with me. That's uh, excellent. So the, the intent that we have with this podcast is to keep uh, you... Uh, up to date with whatever is happening in the world of Plone. So if you're working with Plone, developing Plone itself, or just maintaining sites, administrating, or if you're just generally interested in the community, because you might have been a part of that once or in the technology, uh, this is uh, for you to be able to catch up. Yeah. One note, though, this is an unofficial podcast. We're officially unofficial. Although we are, uh, we've been part of the Plone community, we hear a lot of things. Uh, Philip has been on, on the board uh, uh, for some years as well. These are our own opinions, of course, and not endorsed by the Plone Foundation, who we, of course, love and are members of. That is true. And we uh, try to separate the podcast in three parts. We usually cover one or a maximum of two uh, features uh, that we discuss in depth. Uh, then we'll cover some stuff that is new, for example, events, conferences, releases, or whatever has happened in the last couple of weeks that we consider as newsworthy that you might be interested in. And we have a third uh, session uh, part of this, uh, and we call that other. What are we going to talk about there? Anything else, personal opinions, nice things that have happened, something you noticed, whatever. So, for example, when, when did you, oh yeah, yeah, you called me on, on a Saturday afternoon, uh, uh, like, do you want to do some uh, podcasting with me? And I was like, yeah, sure, um, I'll call you back. But I was actually, so one of my hobbies uh, for uh, since COVID is uh, doing a lot of walking every day. I can uh, really tell to everybody, if you have been moving around to your office uh but you're now working from home, take a walk every day. Uh, and I was uh, finishing my last portion of Bramble uh, marmalade because I've been walking past Bramble bushes for the last one and a half years. Uh, so what is Bramble? I've, I've got, yeah, Brambles are uh, Brahman. So you can make jam, jam or marmalades out of them. And I've been walking past those bushes for the last one and a half years and I see them grow. And this end of July, August is in the Netherlands, the perfect time to harvest uh, brambles from whenever and you can make jam of it which are of course yeah, I, th I think you brought us a, a glass of bramble marmalade we tried to open it it wouldn't open it's uh it, it seems to be encrypted in some way so the the, the lid wouldn't open I'll, we'll have to send it back to you <laughs> then actually that, that's the tricky part you have to seal it correctly because otherwise you can't save it for more than a few months okay well so in the <laughs> other uh section we also cover uh, add-ons that we think you might be interested in these don't have to be new and if you're interested in us covering anything that you think is interesting please drop us uh either emails or fill out the form form on our website, plone.org slash newsroom. Again, this is an unofficial podcast, but we're graciously allowed to use the Plone.org website to just host a couple of um, snippets about the uh, podcast and link to the YouTube channel. Uh, speaking about yeah, so YouTube. Yes. We, the podcast is recorded as video and is available on YouTube. Uh, we'll probably have to get used to being both on video and audio because normally podcasts are, are audio. Um, we plan to have an audio only version, which will be available there, but you could, might, you might miss, uh, uh, a few screen shares we do to, to explain, uh, uh, topics or Philip is going to show some very nice pictures for one of our main features, which is plog. So what does plog stand for? Plog is a uh, plone open garden, uh, which doesn't mean anything if you haven't been there. If you've been there, uh, the reason it's called plone open garden is because it's uh, happening in a hotel. 
which has a beautiful garden, and most of the event is happening in that garden. And it's neither yeah. a conference nor a sprint. Uh, it's a mix of both and more of that. Yeah, so PLOG was normally organized uh, uh, around the end of April, beginning of May, somewhere there. Also, maybe, well, so how, how did the PLOG community end up in, uh, in Sorrento, which is uh, uh, situated in the bay uh, uh, below Naples? Uh, that's because the, uh, we had a very nice uh, PLOG uh, company there that's, I think, picked that location and... They're, they're nowadays less active with Plone, but kind of the community took over, also the communication with the hotel. And the normal idea of Plog was to be there just in front of the, uh, the just before summer really started. So uh, they got some really nice uh, reductions uh, for using uh, the hotel and also for the rooms. It's an ex excellent hotel. It's a really nice, really nice hotel. Yes. Yeah. So, so Plog is not only for you as a Plone developer or Plone user or Plone admin, but also for your family. I brought my kids, my mother-in-law, a niece, another two nieces, actually. Uh, I, like all my, uh, all my rel relatives was there at some point because it's such a, it's a good deal uh, financially. It's a great location. You have, obviously, you have Pompey uh, right next to it. They have, you have Mount Vesuvius. You have beautiful uh, museums and the coastline. You can, you have excellent food. And to, uh, so obviously uh, having a in-person uh, event in 2021 with the COVID situation globally is a critical thing, but the uh, foundation has decided that as long as local rules uh, permit that, it will go ahead and it will take place. Um, preferably, or I'm not sure if the rules are set there, uh, I guess preferably if you're vaccinated or uh, recovered from COVID. Um, but uh, as far as we know at the moment, uh, this event is happening and there will be an uh, option, uh, op um, uh, chance to sign up very soon. Yeah. Philip, you showed me some very nice pictures of uh, Block Before the Things. Can you start up the screen share and I'll explain a bit more about the agenda. Excellent. So the focus of Block this year will be Plone 6, getting it ready for release and getting everybody on the same page. Uh, the, the new uh, front end for Plone 6, Volto has been in development for uh, multiple years already, uh, but this is the, the time uh, to finish up uh, uh, some loose ends that are still there and also to uh, pay attention to have more community involvement, which means trainings, because PLOG is a mix of training, helping each other, uh, having some, some unofficial meetings, discussing the way forward, uh, presentation sometimes, we've, it's been all there in, in PLOG. But the focus of this uh, year will be uh, finishing up uh, Plan 6, discussing issues, and also uh, giving explanation to people about using uh, and training people with the new uh, Volto front end for Plan 6. So this picture is uh, ah, taken yes. from one of the hotel rooms to the, in the garden. So. Everything you see there is the garden, including the pool. And uh, so by the pool is a pagoda-like structure uh, where we have trainings and discussions and we have stand-ups around the pool. I remember one plug a couple of years back when uh, Miko attended and he said, uh, unless you do a commit to the plone documentation every day, you'll have to jump in, in the pool. And it was a pretty cold uh, April uh, that year. So everybody was very anxious to actually do a commit. Uh, speaking of Miko, I heard that he's getting married this weekend. So congratulations, Miko, and uh, may your, I don't know, your life be glorious. Um, yeah, many, many good memories of, of Plog. Um, I remember, Philip, you and me uh, uh, with, I think, with two other people with a nice glass of wine reshuffling the then still in progress mastering Plone uh, training somewhere in 2014. Uh, in the in the bar uh, uh, downstairs. Yeah, a lot of I stuff. I think with a, with the help with the help of a little bit of alcohol. Yeah, that uh, we always helps. Reshuffle. Yeah. We dare to reshuffle the already uh, kind of planned uh, chapters there. Uh, so that's that's the kind of things that uh, the hotel bar does happen, uh, does make blog. good cocktails. That's for sure. That's uh, by the way, this is the view from the uh, hotel roof where you ha can have drinks on Friday evenings. Uh, the view is obviously Mount Vesuvius. 
Uh, but there's more. So if you're in the area and COVID uh, regulations allow that, you can visit the Museum of Archaeological History, the Archaeological Museum in Naples, and you can see this beautiful mosaic of uh, the Battle of Alexander against Darius. It is a breathtaking uh, thing to uh, behold, and standing in front of that is that is that is really something you should definitely go visit there. And if you if you're a bit uncertain. I just met friends who were in Italy a couple of days ago, and they uh, met, uh, they were in opera and restaurants and stuff like that. And Italians are very strict uh, regarding COVID rules. So you have to show your, uh, so, uh, your vaccination certificate. They check it against your passport. So it's not lax at all. They're, they're taking this very seriously. Uh, so to, to keep you safe and themselves, obviously. Yeah. So I've, I've been to, blog now I think three or four times depending on the year depending on the situation of course and and I I realized just before I went the first time to blog like wait a minute Pompeii is just just uh, north of uh, of Sorrento all the things I read about in my textbooks uh, uh, in in school when I was young I could actually start seeing it but I didn't manage the first blog was so busy it was so nice I, th I think only on my second or third trip I was able to visit Pompeii I hope I, I think it's still open of course if, if the if the COVID rules are very strict or the situation changes Pompeii most of Pompeii is outside uh, so I, I if you are really interested in archaeology and and seeing uh, uh, the things you read in your textbooks uh, Pompeii is a very nice uh, uh, leisure uh, effort, uh, leisure activity to do uh, while visiting blog. I can recommend it to everybody. Very much so. And October is off season, so it shouldn't be crowded. It's because Sorrento and the yeah. whole area is filled with tourists in the high season, but uh, should be a good good time there. This is, by the way, Positano on the south coast, and this was the view from the cafe that is just in front of the hotel uh before uh in front of uh the the uh where is it i can't see. what yeah, yeah, many the last pictures. One. there's this yeah. is in in sorrento the, so within sorrento which is a, a lively town there is this gorge with abandoned houses uh used to be a pump station i think something it is super daunting you have to vis visit that you can't go I saw down. people from other people. Yeah, I saw people from. Uh, I saw these pictures, and I, I I hadn't found it. And by accident, while strolling uh, one morning uh, uh, through Sorrento and picking a side street, I suddenly also saw uh, got this view. Like ah, there they are. They're really in the middle uh, of Sorrento, in a kind of a gorge. Uh, you have got old old town. Yeah, an old town ruin. So Philip, again, when is Plog? Um, I'll have to check. Tell me, it's in the notes. <laughs> It's in the notes. It's from the 15th to the 22nd of October, Friday to Friday. It's the week before the online plone conference, which is our uh, next uh, news item. Um, how to sign up? I think there is a form now, right? We had the, int the, the interest uh, inquiry. I don't think there is or a is form the... yet, but it will be published hopefully by the time this podcast is published. And then we'll, it should at least be on plone.org. Yes, definitely. So this is the, in, from, the, um, from the beach in front of the hotel down there. So if the weather is nice, you can swim there. And this is the group photo ah, a previous one. of in front of, yeah, in front in of, front the, of the hotel. hotel. You can see my two daughters in the middle and with the uh, plug t-shirts. And uh, if you're lucky, you can have pizza with the Plon 6 release manager, Eric Steele. I don't think he's coming. So you might have to wait for next year and, uh, until you do that, at least. Yeah. Okay, so that's blog. Next to our next subject, which I already kind of spoiled, the Plone Conference, which will be uh, organized again virtually, just like last just last year in the next uh, in the in the day the week afterwards. It's from October twenty third until the thirty first, and we are again using the same virtual platform, Philip. Yeah, it's Loud Swarm, and it worked uh, really well uh, last year. It's developed by Six Feet Up, by the way. It's a Plone company in the U.S. Uh, it happens uh, online all. It's a full week from October 23rd to 31st. We have two days of training, Saturday and Sunday. 
So we're kicking off with two days of training, four hour each. We have a lot of interesting trainings, uh, four at least, I think five trainings about Volto and uh, developing Plone with Volto, deploying Volto, um, writing add-ons for Volto and stuff like that, but a lot of other interesting stuff. Then five days of talks and open spaces and two days of sprints, all of that remote. And there is a call yeah. for papers and you should... Yeah, so pl yeah, uh, Plone, uh, Plone, uh, uh, the Plone conference is organized for the community, by the community. There's a call for papers has just opened uh, this week. I saw the announcement from Riku Pekka on uh, communityplone.org. If you have something interesting to tell, it doesn't have to be uh, super complex. Uh, actually, the, the talks that have surprised me most over the years are, are somehow sideways related to Plone or ap an application by Plone or sometimes even totally different uh, 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 presentations that do have uh, 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 software development as a subject. Um, it's, it's something for everybody and I don't think it will be any different this year. Yeah, you can get a ticket now. It has a pretty cheap early bird uh, price of $75. If you're from a developing country, it's on even cheaper with $25. And yeah, um, get your ticket now and submit a talk now. Uh, it's going to be an excellent conference. I'm excited about that again. Yeah. So our next news item, we've had a Plone 525 release this Day, last month, last month, no, this month, no, this month, sorry, August. Um, it, the main feature, why I'm a bit confused, it, con it uh, includes the hotfix. So we've had a hotfix uh, uh, just before summer vacation, and this is the wrap up of the hotfix uh, in the next minor, uh, or my, I should say, officially summer, summer versioning, the official next patch release of Plone 5.2. Yeah, that, so that, that, thanks to the uh, security team who did an excellent job of actually managing that complex hotfix, which has seen five releases and then incorporating all these fixes in the uh, in the core. So if if you find a security um, issue in Plone, just don't post that, uh, don't tweet that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, disclose it. I found a security <laughs> issue. <Yes. laughs> disclose it Get to famous. the security team. There is a, a it's linked to on the Plone Org website. Has yeah. a, its own email address, and they handle that responsively. Collect the issues and then release a hot fix that solves the issue. Yeah. So there's been a lot of uh, smaller bug fixes, uh, improving Python 3 compatibility. Uh, Plone up iterate has got some uh, got some proper support for dexterity. Also, the version of SOAP, which is underneath Plone as the application server uh, framework, has been uh, also upgraded with minor releases. We get some very nice uh, SOAP uh, support and, and minor fixes again uh, uh, since I think now one one and a half year. So we've got a separate SOAP team as well that's also supporting Plone uh, by. Uh, by uh, doing minor fixes there. Um, the hotfix uh, uh, from early this summer has had five uh, smaller uh, 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 also fixes as well. The hotfix was in this uh, regard a bit complicated because normally we have two, around two hotfixes and this hotfix collected fixes from I think over a year. Um, but those have also all been folded. So when you update your build out, don't forget to remove the hotfix uh, when you switch to Plan 525. Yeah, that is true. Um, yeah, uh, there's obviously there's a full release notes on Plan.org. There's a news item on that if you're interested. It's uh, again, it's a bug fix release, so it shouldn't break anything that you did. It doesn't in include breaking changes or changing APIs. It's only fixes. Um, but yeah. make sure to read the re release notes anyway. Yeah, that's so. That's uh, uh, so. Of course, one feature can uh, the, the, the saying that we sometimes have no. It's a bug. It's a feature. That's also uh, for for this part. There has there was some uh, template rendering uh, small fixes that have been done to improve security. But of course, if you improve security, you might break some access there. So pay uh, uh, pay some attention to the notes if you are uh, doing some uh, funky stuff uh, with, for example, templates. Yeah. So the uh, the third news item is Plone 6. Uh, it's obviously not released, otherwise that would be our feature. But um, yeah, what's going on with Plone 6? Um, maybe let's yeah, we had step a... 
step back. What is Plone 6? Plone 6 is going to be the next major Plone release, and it has a completely new front end, new user interface, even has a new name, the, not Plone, but the user interface has a name, it's called Volto. Uh, it's written in React. Um, if you if you have an existing site or prefer the server side render templates that we used in Plone 5, uh, we got you covered. There is Plone 6 Classic. That's what the official name is for that. If you use a uh, Bootstrap 5 updated version of the classic user interface, there is a, if you are not at all certain what Plone 6 is, there is a new fancy site on Plone.org that explains everything about in about Plone 6 in easy terms. I'm going to share that site uh, just quickly so you can see that. It's uh, if you click on what is Plone, and you'll finally land up there in uh, Plone 6 land. It has screenshots about uh, the new editor that you can work with to create complex layouts, uh, explains what features it has, and so on and so, so forth, and has links to the demo sites where you can uh, test uh, the um, Plone 6 release. Yeah. So uh, last week we had a meeting, a monthly meeting with the Steering Circle uh, uh, Council, which is uh, a kind of uh, monthly uh, meeting with the uh, different uh, people from the different teams uh, the Plone community is organized by. And also, the, of course, the current state of Plone 6 uh, was discussed. Uh, a pre-release, a pre-alpha release uh, should be coming soon. There are a few blockers or technical hurdles left. Uh, to uh, to to look into. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the thing is, uh, Plone Six uh, is is like Philip explained two things. Uh, when uh, somebody new uh, will download the installer from Plone Six and they start a new site, they should by default get the new Plone Six Volto front end. If you are uh, more experienced with Plone, you already have a classic website, or as you know from Plone 5.2, and you want to upgrade or migrate that, then you still have the option to uh, to use the classic version. But we're really, Plone 6, in marketing terms, if somebody, a newbie, hears Plone 6, uh, they should think React Front and Volto, very nice features. For all people already using Plone 5, there is the classic, but in marketing, we are, uh, uh, in marketing terms and in uh, public relations, communication, Plone 6 means Volto new front end. That is true. But, but the, we, to integrate that, it needs a, 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 some glue to, 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 to put these two together. And there are a couple of packages that need some uh, finishing up uh, that enable folderish content types, enable the blocks behavior that give you the nice editor and stuff like that. And this work is not yet done. This was the first blocker, uh, but people are working on that. And the second blocker, uh, of stuff that we want in Plone 6 is the dexterity side shoot. So in earlier times, uh, content in Plone is either archetypes, used to be archetypes, now it's dexterity, but the Plone site itself is also a content type and it's neither. It used to, it's a, some CMF type-ish thing. I actually don't really know. And uh, one of the changes that we wanted to do with Plone 6 is uh, to have that be uh, a dexterity type because then you can enable the blocks behavior and get the editor without fancy uh, hacks that are not accessible uh, to people with a normal brain. Yeah. So for this reason, <clears throat> uh, the first release of Plone will probably not be an, an alpha release uh, because the alpha release would mean that we have solved these blockers. But to get people working on fixing the blockers, we need a pre-alpha release. So hopefully that will be out in one of the next one or two weeks, depending on, on capacity yeah. and what else is found, of course. The dexterity so, is almost done. So I, th I think yeah, that one was fixed. requests yeah. was, were merged already, but there are still two or three that are open and under review by the framework team at the moment. Yeah, so that's ongoing work. And what's happening with Plone 6? Philip, what should we do? <laughs> what should we do? That's our feature. We should, that's we, our feature. We should just release it right now say it's done <laughs> right now we're done yeah no that, that that's the challenge i mean but that's the challenge we had for the last one and a half years is it's really the communication we can do a lot of stuff remote uh, uh in the plone community but you need to to uh, to be uh, together physically and in one room uh, sometimes as well to to solve this stuff and i think the last time i've been to a sprint 
uh, uh, was March last year, and I just got back from an, uh, a kind of smaller uh, uh, community uh, uh, event, which is part of the IT on board cooperation, which was very cool. So I've 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 seen some other people, some other plone people again this week, which was really nice. And then you you suddenly realize when you're together again and discussing these things over a nice glass of beer. Uh, we have also discussed some 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 plone stuff, of course. It's like ah yeah, that's how it works when you're together and you can see each other and. Tuck, 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 respond. Yeah, the magic I really hope we can. And st the magic happens done. there as well. So exactly. The official we need that release kind of date stuff. doesn't exist. It's done when it's done. That's what we're trying to bring across here. Uh, but um, it's going to happen soon, and it's definitely worth the wait. Uh, if you can't wait, actually, Plon 6 is used in production by a lot of uh, companies already. There are sites using Volto or Plon 6 Classic. Uh, we're doing that. Um, Kit Concept is doing that. Uh, um, Red Turtle is doing that. A lot of companies are using Plon 6 already. Um, it's kind of living on the edge, but it is uh, it is worth it. But we're, we can't wait for a real release. So yeah. let's go to the so, third section. Yeah, I was amazed. Uh, uh, a coincidence doesn't exist. Sometimes people say, uh, we've got our next section to discuss some uh, Plone add-ons that we noticed or are using of Appian. And Philip put on uh, uh, collective explicit acquisition on the list. Philip, why? Yeah, it's a tiny add-on that uh, disables a feature that can ruin your uh, search result uh, for, for Google, your search ranking and uh, your user experience because Plone has this crazy feature called acquisition where uh, a, a content object, if you ask that for an, an attribute um, or um, so if you traverse to somewhere uh, there, it can look up this attribute on their parents. So it walks up the path. And even if, you, if it finds a, uh, a way down there from there, it even walks down there. So you can have these crazy URLs like, uh, for example, uh, en slash demo slash de slash demo slash example, which would render a site example that is actually in en demo example. Uh, no, that's actually in de demo example. This is very <laughs> terrible, and it's really you. hard just, to, to show. <laughs> oh. You just demonstrated the issue with yeah. uh, uh, with the issue. So if you're interested in, in one of these, because this has been part of the SOAP application server since the early beginning, the creation of SOAP, and it's something that we carried uh, along for a long time. It, it's Again, this is it's a feature. It's not a bug. But of course, in those almost 20 years now of having a plone on top of SOAP, uh, acquisition has been uh, a, a, a great lover, but also a, a devilish fiend uh, when you start uh, building some more complex uh, uh, things and you, you are hit by this. That was, uh, has been a presentation by Eric Breho at the PlonConf 2019 in Ferrara called Traversal, if you're interested in, in, in knowing more about this. Uh, collective, uh, nowadays, we don't really need acquisition anymore. You, you, could use acquisition for very fancy things uh, with SOAP and Plone. With the, I think the earlier version of Plone really depended a lot of on, on acquisition. Uh, nowadays, we have other, uh, other techniques for that. Uh, part of it is the SOAP component architecture. Uh, so collective acquisition kind of blocks this, but caveat, because Philip didn't know, I was also uh, 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 looking, I have also been looking into collective explicit acquisition earlier this year, and we found that we had some edge cases. For example, if you use Plone Mosaic and you install uh, this add-on, then sometimes your Mosaic views don't work anymore, because Mosaic is also kind of doing some traversal thingy, uh, and there's an exception there. So. Please look, if you have larger sites, please look into this. As Philip said, your search results and SEO uh, could sometimes be, be heard by, it, by this uh, and be aware of acquisition. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show uh, just quickly the example I tried to explain yeah. before. So I just created, I just went to the demo site and created in the folder demo in the German uh, tree of that site, created a page called example. And I can also go to en demo de demo example and get the same page and this is obviously um, the content doesn't 
obviously exist there. So this small add-on has this kind, this little piece of code. It checks if this is content, and then it finds out if the content is acquired. And if it's acquired, it raises a not found. Otherwise, it will do nothing. Uh, yield, um, resulting in traversing to that page and publishing that page. It's called uh, Collective Explicit Acquisition. It's on PyP. Um, we, it's a good idea to use that in most projects, but you should probably check for side effects. Yeah. So uh, we've got a little bit of time for one more uh, add-on, which is actually not a, a plain backend add-on, but it's a Volto search block add-on. Philip, you put it on the agenda. Yeah. Explain. Um, that is something I came across uh, following the development of Volto. And I'm um, just going to show that. Um, so w w maybe before I show it, uh, it's written by Tiberio Ichim and Christina Elekes from Odeweb, a excellent plone uh, uh, company from Romania. They uh, hosted the plone conference a couple of years back in Bucharest. That was great, thanks to that. And there is a pull request for the Volto core, and this will hopefully make it in into Volto 3.13, which is hopefully going to be released soon. It's not yet merged yeah. as far as I know. Yeah, so one of the, uh, one of the I think the biggest uh, 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 game changer in the Volto front end is the use of blocks. So we've had a lot of uh, add-ons uh, in the past uh, trying to uh, go from the from the atomic uh, a content item. You have also one content item, a, a page or a document. Uh, but if you want to have composed composite pages, you have to use another concept. We've had collective cover. We've had what did you? You've yeah. mentioned it to me before, Philip. Some very old. Um, we've had mosaic, of course, in the Plone Five series. Uh, we've had uh, add-ons to allow more portlet slots uh, at the sides, top or below. We've had all kinds of composite pages. But now with Volto, we have a composite page concept, which is really part of the core. And this search block is a block that will enable you to do a kind of collection listing. Uh, as a block, exactly. In wh wherever, wherever in your in your content, exactly. Philip, show us. So here you get a site uh, front page with some blocks. There's actually the, a, a collection block in here. Uh, it's a listing block. It's what it's called, which has criteria like you do used to have in classic uh, plone with collections. I'm not going to change that. I added a new page, and there's a folder with some content content that has tags. So on this new page, I'm going to not add something. No, I'm going to edit that. And I'm going to add a new block. That new block type here in a common is called search listing. I'll click on it, and I get this nice user interface where I can say, OK, this gets a title called projects or something like that, news maybe, whatever you want to call that. It's mm -hmm. automatically updated, like most things. Yeah, it's live pre Live preview. Yeah, that's excellent. Live preview. And you can yeah. uh, configure some controls. I'm going to get into that later. Uh, most importantly are two things. You configure a base search and facets that you can search for. The base query here is basically criteria like in a collection. I'm going to add a criterion uh, by type and say only show pages. And you see it's going to be automatically updated. It's going to show everything that is a page. Uh, you can dis uh, decide which uh, display type it should use, which template here. I'm going to sort that actually on, I don't know, creation date maybe, um, yeah. in reverse order. So it's what you do usually, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So now I got a, cert a block similar to the listing block. But now, yeah, it looks. It, this is this is still. Uh, I mean, it's still the the collection content type, or for Mosaic, the content listing uh, one. But there's more. It has also uh, the combined functionality of faceted search. So, like EA faceted navigation, or like collective collection filter, all built into the block. Exactly. So I'm gonna add a tag called keywords and it use the uh, it to select tags. And I'm going to say this is going to be uh, multiple choice and so check now adding, adding a facet. Exactly. So now I get my facet here and I can uh, automatically um, 
filter my content, I can also say this is not multiple choice. So I get radio buttons, uh, or if I not use checkbox, I get a drop down list, but I like these checkboxes. This is fine. And once I save, I get uh, this whole thing. And when I click here, these results are automatically filtered. So this is a lightweight version of easy EEA faceted navigation that Autobab wrote for the European Environment Agency. Thanks for this excellent add-on that we and many other companies use in a lot of their sites. And uh, this is a, if this makes it into the Volta core, this is a very powerful feature to uh, create filterable results for, for example, staff members, projects, uh, you name it, uh, news items uh, tagged by different uh, topics um, without doing a single line of programming, which is uh, something that Plone was always strong at. Yeah, so it's it's really nice to see this this block concept now uh, uh, being used and kind of being becoming uh, a core concept in Plone, which is something I think we've been wait, all waiting for for a long time. If you look at uh, Vested Navigation, it, it, had to, it had to build in its own kind of layout me uh, mechanism, for example, to show the facets or to show the, the collection results. Uh, uh, and this is now really, yeah, reuse, reuse the block concept. It's very cool. And it's only, I think, when did you start? This is only a few months old. Yeah, this is a, a couple of And already weeks looking old. very promising. Yeah, it was very yeah. quickly yeah. done by Tiberio yeah. and Christina. And uh, yeah. I heard from Tiberio that, um, that Victor, who's basically the release manager for Volto, uh, and the mastermind behind that is in favor of merging that into the core. So I'm very optimistic that we'll have that in a final Plone 6 release, which will be excellent. So that's the Volto search block. I think we have to wrap up, Philip. Yeah, we should. Um... We want to uh, keep this. The, so that's the, the podcast. We want to provide you with news, to provide you some insights, but we really want to keep it under the 35, 40 minutes or ideally 30 minutes uh, every month. So to wrap up, there's the link to the website. Don't forget plone.org uh, new, slash newsroom, our official, unofficial uh, spot to uh, where you can find a form to uh, suggest topics for us to include in the next podcast. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching that on YouTube or just on your uh, iPod or whatever you use for your podcasts. And um, we wish you a great month and we'll talk to you next month, I guess, before the conference. Yeah. See you next month. See you soon. Bye-bye.